Hi, this is Takatoshi Shibayama, host of the Future Design Podcast. And no, it's not the best of times. I'm sure everybody's wondering what the hell is going to happen to the world economy. My business, my job, my family, what the future beholds. I don't know. And I'm thinking about this more and more as I'm stranded at home, homeschooling my kids, savaging my business. But I thought, I created the Future Design Podcast so that I could bring in business leaders and visionaries to show a path to the future. And in this moment of crisis, if I can't bring you that, there's no point of doing it. So I decided to ask around. And in this spirit, I bring to you Future Design Podcast COVID-19 Special. Future Design Podcast. Or I think it was yes, it was definitely the first episode. Yeah, our, I think so. Our future design podcast, and uh, and and uh, you had the most views out of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you know there was so much great insights from you that you know in this new COVID nineteen edition of our future design podcast, I wanted you to be number one again uh, to speaking to our viewers. So I'm touched. Thank uh, you very much. So, <laughs> thank you. And uh, so, you know, just for the viewers that never uh, seen the first uh, Future Design podcast, can you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, once sure. So, uh, so my name is Neil. I'm originally British. I come from just outside of London. I came to Singapore in 2009. I've been here for 11 years now. Uh, and I've worked in and around the media, marketing, advertising, film, TV, uh, that whole milieu. And so uh, I find myself now as a, as a sort of lone wolf, um, as a, but I call myself a content strategy and storytelling consultant. So basically I help companies um, tell better stories and hopefully for a positive business impact. Right. And uh, so now we're in this like COVID-19 situation, Singapore, it's like uh, second week in full lockdown at the moment. How are you coping uh, with this situation? <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm all right. I'm, uh, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones. So, uh, you know, I have this lovely uh, middle class kind of job that I can do from home. Um, I live in a, a fairly spacious apartment. It's not palatial by any means, but it's very comfortable. Um, we have the great fortune in Singapore, as many people do, of having a helper. So we can split the uh, the homeschooling a little bit um, with our helper, who's a very smart lady from, from the Philippines. Um, and yeah, I, I'm going to give this horribly middle class answer in that for me, it's um, as long as it doesn't go on too long, it's kind of dealable with. And I find that I'm spending a lot more time with my daughter uh, without distraction. Um, and so it's better times, quality time. Um, and so I'm going to try and focus on the positive, cherish that um, while it lasts. But I hope it doesn't last forever. Um, on the business side, you know, my wife runs an events agency. So she's been hit very, very hard. Um, and I've been trying to work with her to sort of innovate some new ideas around virtual events. And it, that's sort of still settling down as to what, what is a virtual event? How does it differ from a webinar or a webcast or whatever? There's a lot of new language that you'll see all over LinkedIn and people talking about these solutions, but they're not really defined yet. Um, from my point of view, um, I'm working uh, with a couple of clients still, um, uh, one of them being um, a, a, a non-profit that basically supports uh, media companies in developing markets to make sure that they can have a strong independent um, media uh, where in, in places where it's vulnerable to sort of take over by the government. And uh, I'm working with some outlets in Sri Lanka right now who are doing an incredible job and I think count as essential frontline workers in reporting honest, truthful um, content to their audiences and fighting fake news. And that's really, that's a hell of a client to be with at this particular time. Mm. And uh, and then with your, are there any clients in Singapore as well or? How, how you how, and how what do you, what is the discussion that you have with your clients at the moment? I mean, how 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 do you try to engage them to do more business with you? Um, well, I'm not pushing it too hard at the moment. I mean, uh, I naturally actually had a whole bunch of uh, 2019 projects sort of come to a conclusion. So um, the, the the timing was okay. The the clients that I'm still talking to, or the contacts that I'm still talking to, um, a lot of them are feel like it would be a little crass right now to be out there pushing a product or a service. And and I understand that. But I actually think there is a role for brands to play right now. And, and one of the most important is what I was just saying, which is supporting truthful, honest uh, reporting from legitimate news outlets. There's this weird irony right now in that the viewership of news has never been higher. Um, and at that exact moment, 
a lot of the brands are pulling their spending um, and that's not going to help in the fight against fake news. So uh, with this outlet in Sri Lanka called Roar that I'm working with, who are just these cool young guy, you know, the CEO is like 26 and they've got this total startup vibe going and um, they're doing an incredible job. They're a digital first company doing an amazing job reporting um, on the crisis with quite a junior staff um, led by an amazing editor in chief called Roll. And um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help them find a way to sort of make it okay for brands in a in a in a tasteful and useful way to support their journalism, and it's kind of sponsorship of it almost as a public service. Um, and I think that's a role where brands that are connected to safety in this time can can play a part. Because as much as we need to sanitize and we need to wear our masks and we need to social distance, we need to not spread fake news and we need to keep ourselves informed. And legitimate media outlets are the best way to do that. So companies like Dettol and Lifebuoy who are out there to keep people safe. They could they could support this coverage. Um, and brands that maybe keep you safe online as well as off, you know, what about, uh, you know, antivirus brands and things like that, you know, we wanna keep you safe offline as well as online, whatever. I think the sponsorship is legitimate. The messaging is the next thing that then needs to be dealt with is, is how do you deliver a tasteful and useful message? And, um, and I can go on about that for days, but you let me know what you're interested in. <laughs> I'm just gonna plug my computer in. It's starting to, uh, to lose battery, bear with me a second. These are, these are things that we didn't have to worry about in meetings before. <laughs> Definitely. There we go. All right. I'm powered up. Yeah. So then, um, you know, there are companies that are relevant right now, as you said, like they're, they're you know, sanitizer companies or it could be, um, you know, it could be fitness apps. You know, there's a lot of, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> there's heaps of those. I see them in my social media all the time. Uh, but, you know, there are industries that are kind of irrelevant to this kind of time at, at, yeah. at this precise time, right? So how do you communicate with those clients to see if they can, you know, continue, you know, building their brands during this time? So uh, there's, a, there's a very legitimate discussion as to whether or not that's something they should be doing right now anyway. Um, I mean, if they're good, solid businesses, hopefully they'll last the crisis out and they can start again on the other side and perhaps play a role in helping people get back to normality or rebuild their lives. Um, but right now, I think if you can't be useful with your branding and advertising, um, i.e. Uh, sharing information or messages that are going to be inspiring or hopeful or educational, um, that are going to help people some way through this crisis. For example, um, people are having to cook at home uh, in many cases for the first time, you know, so that's great. There's a really great opportunity for a food brand to be genuinely useful, create content that helps people find, you know, 20 ways to create a meal out of one pack of Maggie noodles or something like that. Cause that's what a lot of people's cupboards look like right now. It's instant noodles, it's rice, it's, you know, potatoes, whatever. Um, so I think, you know, those brands can be useful. If you can't, um, if you're not delivering a product or a service that's useful right now, then maybe um, you can look at retooling and actually providing something useful online. So for example, when people can't leave their houses, there's not a, much of a role for Uber or Grab, but could they um, be providing free rides to frontline workers, essential workers, something like that? Now you might say, what's that got to do with brand building? Well, believe me, if they do that, they will be remembered after this crisis for doing that, for being useful, for helping out. Um, and I think, you know, you've seen LVMH are doing that by making sanitizer and you've seen Dyson do that by creating ventilators. Um, so I think that's the, the, the second role to play. But the third role to play might be to say, you know what, people have got bigger things to worry about now. Now is not our time. I saw a complaint um, the other day on LinkedIn from somebody that, you know, the, the people that haven't turned off their automated ads on Facebook and whatever are kind of your, your what we call your online bottom feeders. You know, the people who are like, uh, you know, click this, this link and find the one trick that can do this, that or the other. Um, thankfully, they don't have huge brands to protect, but they are really tacky right now. And, and they need to think about pressing stop on that automation that they set back in January, you know. And how do you see the uh, industry evolving after this COVID-19 situation? You know, they, they've been, you know, gearing a lot of their efforts into one, I guess, salvaging their businesses. Mm -hmm. And then two, then, then, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of BTC uh, related businesses, then you're reaching out to your customers, providing that help uh, to the ones who need it. Uh, how do you see that uh, after all this is kind of over? You know, I, I, I made the fatal mistake last night in that I was um, I was feeling very anxious. I've, I've been pretty cool, but I was feeling pretty anxious last night. I woke up at about 2 a.m. and I spent three hours reading um, news and, and media, and, and I probably shouldn't. I don't think that was wise because 
everybody's got this take on what the future is going to be like. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, this changes everything. No one can quite tell you why or how, but they're, they're convinced it changes everything. Um, I'm not quite so convinced. Um, it will probably change a few things. Um, but I think in the immediate aftermath, certainly from my point of view, the sort of the economy is going to take a hit. There's going to be huge debts to pay back at a government level. This is going to affect taxation. It's going to affect house prices. It's going to affect credit. Um, you know, these kind of fundamental things rather than, you know, we're all going to suddenly tomorrow start recycling or something crazy like that. Um, and I think people will be more careful with their money. So as a brand, I think, you know, is your product or service important is it is it purposeful is it making people's lives better or easier or more comfortable or, or whatever um and are you communicating that you know I, i'm not sure that many people are going to be in a position to buy something because now it has go faster stripes on it or now it has uh, you know a new widget attached to it i mean I'm, I'm a terrible fiend for buying camera gear and updating cameras all the time but you know what that's probably going to take a back seat for a few months i'm going to live without those you know couple extra megapixels on my image um, because that's not really going to make um, life better and it's not worth the risk when you know people are going to be in a financially precarious situation now as i said i live this fairly comfortable middle class life i'm aware of that but i'm getting through my savings at a hell of a rate here and uh, i'm very conscious that uh, i would like to retire comfortably and i'm going to have to build that up somehow and that's going to take a real toll on my how i spend um, we've already cancelled a holiday in june the next holiday that was going to be a big one to europe you know the big two-week family holiday to europe I'm not going to replace that holiday with a holiday to Europe. You know, that's done now. I'm going to, you know, stay local um, and, and save the money because I've no doubt after this, no matter what happens, we're not going to be in the same financial position. And I think that's something brands need to be uh, aware of is, is whatever happens next, even if, if the economy recovers, I don't think people are going to be in the mood to spend on, on frivolity. Mm, yeah. And you mentioned about the essentials of life and uh, how brands are trying to help, uh, you know, the consumers uh, live a better life, healthier life. I think that will be the kind of focus uh, for after all this. I hope so. I mean, I, you know, you never know. You might have a generation of people who now suddenly have an interest in cooking for themselves at home. And so maybe that whole, you know, um, segment explodes. Um, Apple have released, as, as Apple does, I mean, we can't all have access to the talent and resources that Apple has got, but um, they, in two weeks, turned around an ad with the TVWA and Media Arts Lab, I think they're called. Um, go find it online. And it's basically just celebrating creativity in quarantine, you know, the way people are uh, learning new skills, learning new languages. Again, in nice, comfortable middle class homes where people can stay at home all day and afford a Mac. You know, this doesn't include everybody, but for their target market, it makes sense. Um, and, you know, that might be something that comes out of this self-improvement, um, language courses. You know, my brother's teaching uh, people to play guitar on Skype now. Um, maybe we'll all find time to improve ourselves that way a little bit. And we'll move less from a product and, and commodities kind of economy and into more of an experience and service economy where we're learning things and we're improving ourselves internally, not just externally. Maybe that's utopian middle class guardian column rubbish. I don't know. Uh, but you've got to look for the light somewhere um, in this. So, so maybe that's that's where the light will come from. Yeah, and I hope so too, because uh, yeah, I'm surely learning some new skills uh, during this time as well. And hopefully there's a lot more people out there uh, thinking of the same, trying to distract themselves, but also at the same time, improving their human value as well. Well, so that, that worries me. So I'm, I've been on, um, you know, I, 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 I haunt LinkedIn quite a lot, as you well know. Um, and, you know, I've seen a lot of people posting their home working setups, and that's kind of cute, and posting their reading. List. These are the books I'm going to get through, you know, during this. And someone's got like a, tack, a stack of 10 books about, you know, God is my CEO and, and, and entrepreneurship for beginners and learn. And I, it's all business. And I'm like, that's great. You know, and you're going to improve. And that's wonderful. But don't forget the humanity, guys. Read some fiction, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, read some poetry or something, you know. We maybe it's just a LinkedIn thing, but we are three. We're rounded individuals. We're three dimensional people. Um, and I think, you know, try not to focus on one thing. You know, you improve the whole person. I, it worries me if people are out there just reading business books. They must have be very boring dinner guests is what I think. All right. Great. Thanks a lot for your time, Neil. And uh, totally hopefully, pleasure. yeah, hopefully we can do another episode on a different occasion uh, with a different topic. So, a happier occasion and hopefully in yeah. person, Taka. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, I love to see you too. All right, thank you. Take care. Future Design Podcast.